We're enormously fortunate this afternoon to have as our commencement speaker, Daniel Webster. He's a Georgia Tech alumnus who represents Florida's 11th district in the United States Congress. A family man and small business owner, he has served Central Florida's citizens for more than three decades of public life, when he's winning his first election to the Florida House of Representatives at age 30. In 1996, he rose to become Speaker of the Florida House, the first Republican to hold that position in 122 years. He won election twice to the Florida Senate, first in 1998 and again in 2002. As the Senate Majority Leader, he worked to pass sweeping reforms that changed the way the legislature did business. From 2010 to 2016, he has won election to the U.S. Congress four times. An example of his staying power is that, due to redistricting, he has run and won in three different districts during his time. With his engineering background, Representative Webster currently is a ranking member of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. In the 115th Congress, he was also named to the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology, and the House Committee on Natural Resources. Congressman Webster was born in Charleston, West Virginia, but we're glad he made his way to South Georgia, where he earned his degree in electrical engineering in 1971 here at Georgia Tech. He's married to Sandra Jordan of Orlando, and they have six children, David, Brent, Jordan, Elizabeth, John, and Victoria, and 14 grandchildren. Congressman Webster is active in his church, First Baptist Church of Central Florida, and although he's known for many things, Congressman Webster still holds his faith, his family, and his principles as his biggest asset. Please help me in welcoming Congressman Daniel Webster. Thank you, Dr. Peterson. It's great to be here today and to you and uh, the faculty and friends and, and uh, special guests and others who are gathered here today. Welcome. Uh, this is a big deal for me. It's a big day for you as graduates, but it's a big deal for me. Uh, I, I would count it as one of the best honors I've received uh, since I've been elected many years ago. And I would like to tell you, graduates, it's a big deal for you. This is not the easiest place to escape. <laughs> They've tried to downplay the fact that most of us say we got out. I don't think they want to say that anymore, but it, you know it's true. We got out. <laughs> so to you, congratulations. Well done. Graduating from this institution is an awesome, awesome uh, achievement. Uh, this, the, the week, the week I started classes, well, I mean, it was the week before I started classes when I came to Georgia Tech, we had a, a retreat, a freshman retreat. And during that retreat, we're in a big room and, and someone said, uh, one of the speakers said, uh, look to your right, look to your left, look in front of you, look behind you. Only one of you is gonna make it to graduation day. You know what? You're one of those ones. You made it to graduation day, and so that we are so grateful. You, you studied long, you worked hard, you learned much, and for that, we're here to honor you. Matter of fact, the only reason we're here today is to honor you. You are the only reason, and you deserve it. So I would say enjoy this day because it's a great day, and it's one you'll look back on fondly, having received a diploma from this fantastic institution. Uh, this ceremony is a, it's an end and a beginning. It's a graduation ceremony. That's an end. It's, a, it's like a graduate is somebody who's completed a course of study, and today, that, that's the day. The book closes, it's done, you're over, you're gonna get a diploma, you're finished. On the other hand, I was invited to be a commencement speaker Commencing is beginning, it's a, new, it's a new start. So today as that book closes on this chapter of your life, another book opens and it's gonna be even wider than this one. 
and all the opportunities that are out there are just going to be uh, amazing when you start seeking them. And uh, the end produces a diploma, uh, which signifies the completion of the necessary courses and studies uh, for the particular discipline you were engaged in. That's done. But, you know, it doesn't seem long ago that I was graduating from Georgia Tech. It was before you were born. <laughs> but <clears throat> I received a degree in electrical engineering, and my mom gave me a graduation card. Maybe your parents are going to give you a graduation card. Maybe there'll be some money in it. A little bit of money was in mine. But I, on the outside, it said, four years ago, I couldn't even spell engineer. <laughs> and I opened it up on the inside. It said, now I are one. <laughs> so now you are one, a graduate. And congratulations for that. The diploma you see, receive is more than just a piece of paper with uh, some words on it and some signatures, way more than that. First of all, it's a picture of the time and energy and effort that you and others who supported you put in to this four or maybe five year or maybe longer uh, trek to graduation day. And it makes this special occasion possible. But second of all, this is not just any diploma. This is Georgia Tech. It's different. And so uh, President Peterson and the leadership here and the faculty, uh, not only have they ma maintained our, our rich history and, and uh, a lot of traditions, the whistle, the wreck, the, the fight, George P. Burdell, all of those things have been maintained, yet they have taken this uh, uh, Georgia Tech and grown it, grown it in stature among uh, not only our country, uh, all over our country, but also globally. And they have turned this into a, a, to an institution that has a fantastic reputation all over the world. Just last week, the annual Capstone Design Expo was held right here in this pavilion. And Capstone, uh, it just, um, it, it is a picture of a, a showcase, a showcase where Georgia Tech graduates can show their stuff before they ever graduate. Any of y'all participate in that? Anybody? A few? Yeah, okay, you did. That's great. And, and there were 242 teams competing in most, the most in uh, Georgia Tech history. And it's pretty awesome. Matter of fact, it's the biggest one in the country. More than 1,200 graduating seniors from 11 different schools, three different colleges within Georgia Tech competed and, and participated. And their designs were everything from, from drones to uh, there was something else, underwater robots and a lot of things in between. Uh, the winning team, Pump It Up Kraken, a water sampling system that will be deployed under the Arctic ice, which is a pretty awesome thing. But you know what? Even before this day of graduation, the stories are beginning to mount about the graduates who are in this particular class and they're being told. Uh, I, I read a couple of them and I wanted to highlight them. Molly Ricks. Talk to her before this started. There she is right over here. And uh, she uh, is an international affairs major. Uh, Molly was a InVenture Prize finalist as a freshman. Uh, her product helped new users learn to pay the guitar. But Molly is one of 11 children. I think she's the fifth, fifth born. And so the first five have been at Georgia Tech and she told me there is more to come. So, and her, her dad also is an alumnus. Marcy Williams, didn't get to meet her, but I know she's here somewhere. And she's a business major, a mother of three, who came back to school uh, with her daughter, and she's graduating today. Balancing athletics and academics at Georgia Tech is not easy. This year, both the men's and women's teams made it to the finals in the NIT basketball tournament. It's awesome. Way to go. I watched all the games, uh, and they played excellent. Quentin Stevens, who I met beforehand, he's a business uh, major. Quentin, where are you? There you are. You could have stayed sitting down. We could have still seen you, I think. <laughs> but he was on the men's basketball team, star athlete there. Katrina Bukovic. She also was on the women's team. And I don't know where she is, but uh, we're great. There she is right here. Awesome. 
Both are gonna walk across the stage today. Ana Gomez Del Campo is part of a team that in, invented WAPL, an automated balance uh, test to, uh, uh, to uh, assess athletes following concussions. The device will help keep athletes safe and reduce the risk of permanent damage. Uh, Anna is a biomed uh, biomedical engineer, ma engineering major. There are more stories, but the point is this. Every one of you are graduating from a, uh, and are part of a group graduating from an awesome institution. And so you're gonna get a diploma, and I would tell you, display that diploma proudly, because you're a group, a select group, an important group, not only for your community, not only for this area if you stay in it, but also for our country. Uh, we need your brilliance, we need your diligence, we need your entrepreneurship, and I know the graduates of this institution are gonna be able to produce. And maybe we even need your uh, interest in politics. Now I will advise you, when I graduated from Georgia Tech, I, re I can remember one thing. Every single engineering class I had, we had quizzes and tests and exams. And in each one of those, each individual problem had one answer. Then I got into politics and nobody even wanted to be confused with the facts or the answers. They, there are no answers, no art right answers. It's a, it's a wild thing. So I just warn you, if you do, just know it's not gonna be like engineering. Uh, so, knowledge, grades, credits, diplomas, those are all excellent things. They're foundational for your success. But I'd like to share with you three principles, leave with you these principles, uh, that I hope would aid you in being successful. The first is, learn the value of time. Every one of us have the same amount of time. Every one of us. And 24 hours each day. Treasure every hour. Think about it, gold. Gold is measured in 24 units, 24 carats being the, the finest gold, the most expensive gold. Time is the same way. It is very, very valuable. And I would tell you, don't waste any of it. One time I was, I had to stay in a, uh, especially when I was in the state legislature, hotels all the time. And so, I was in a hotel room and Georgia Tech was playing a game It started at nine o'clock. This is many years ago. Mark Price was on that team and John Sally and some others who have become, uh, I'm sure they're highlighted in all kinds of places in this uh, building. But in that game, uh, they played till the uh, regulation and then there were three overtimes after that. I saw two of those three overtimes and then I went to sleep and I woke up and there was fuzz on the screen and I missed the, the last one. It was late and I got up late the next day. I didn't get to prepare for the day and I, I just thought even though it was Georgia Tech, I just thought, you know what? I'm just not going to turn on a TV ever again in a motel room by myself. I just thought I'm not going to do that. Nothing wrong with it. Certainly nothing wrong with watching Georgia Tech. It is kind of bad they lost, but but nothing wrong with that. It's just the fact I wanted to take my time and spend it the best way I could. And so every day I wake up and I tell myself, today, like I did this morning, today is May the 6th, 2017. I'll never get another opportunity to live this day again. It's gonna be gone. So I wanna li live it with the best purpose I can possibly uh, conceive. Secondly, I tell you, learn the value of reading. Um, yeah, the books are closed and you're over and now you're gonna go out and do things. Yes, that's true. But growing up, matter of fact, I loved doing. I hated, despised reading. I didn't like it, but you know what? I taught myself to like it. I still don't like it as much as I like other things, but I do like it and I do read and I, I would commend that to you. It is, I forced myself to read initially and now I read, I like it. I, uh, I read through the Bible every year. Pick what you will, read what you will, but do it. That's the key, read. And then lastly, learn the value of listening. You know what the most prized possession of a, a member of Congress or a legislature or a governor or others, you know what they love? They love these microphones. You know why? They like to talk. They just talk. 
I mean, you can look at an empty chamber, the House of Representatives chamber uh, on C-SPAN. If you do, you're pretty bored, but, but if you watched it, you would notice there were, there's nobody in the room. And you know what? We're still talking. But I would tell you, learn the value of listening. I mean, most people, because of a position or a title or something else, want to be heard. So they're the governor or a legislator or a, a commissioner or a congressman or a president or whatever. They want to be heard. Why? Because they have a position and they think they should be heard. I would give you a, maybe a little alternative to that. Earn the right to be heard by listening. The people you listen to are the key to your success in the future. So I would ask you, please learn the value of listening. Um, so those, those things right there, learn the value of rising early and time and how important that is. Learn the value of reading and then learn the value of listening. Those three things I would commend unto you. And I would tell you again, may you find true success. I know each of you are very excited about the, and, and have full into, uh, anticipation about what lies ahead of you. I wish you the best. Congratulations again. May God bless you and God bless the United States. Go Jackets. Oh yes. Thank you, Congressman, for your kind words, and thank you for representing us in the United States Congress.